So in the 1970s, we saw conservative presidents attempting to reverse the shift that we had seen in the 30s to marble cake federalism. So in other words, they were trying to unswirl that cake. Obviously not possible, just like it's not possible to unswirl a cake, it's not possible to completely reverse the shift towards nationalization. However, they attempted to do this and attempted to give more power back to the states. This is because nationalization was associated with a more liberal or progressive agenda. So conservatives often used a tool called block grants to do this. In other words, what they did is they did not attach a lot of strings to the funding for federal programs. This allowed states to administer the programs very conservatively if they wanted. it. It also reduced the size and scope of federal oversight over these programs, right? Because each state got to do their own thing. So we can see then that the use of block grants was typically considered a conservative tool. And if you look at the video on this playlist, uh, the little about two minute video from PBS NewsHour, where they discuss the reforming of Medicaid by using block grants, you'll see how they discuss that that's a conservative idea, right? It would be limiting the reach of Medicaid. However, you'll also see, I posted a sort of political ad from Elizabeth Warren, who if you are not aware, um, Senator Warren is quite liberal. Um, and this ad actually discusses how liberal uh, politicians want to see the rise of block grants, want to see block grants of certain types being used because it turns out that progressives have been able to use block grants to their favor as well and advance more progressive ideas than the federal government would ordinarily want to fund. Because if there are no restrictions, the funds can be used very conservatively or they can be used for a more progressive agenda. So we're seeing that with this shift to new federalism, we've started to see a pushback and maybe a shift towards progressive federalism.